In this episode of Mind Pump, we talk about the value of walking after a meal and more. In fact, we talked about Adam's Hawaii trip. We hadn't seen each other for like 10 days, so we all missed each other's nice bromance in this episode. <laughs> I don't know. It's a, it's like, oh, yeah, like. So we talked about a program giveaway. You're going to have to watch the episode to find out. And then we answered some questions from listeners like uh, controversial health opinions. We actually have some very controversial ones, which we covered in this episode. And then we talked about shaky arms when you bench press. So if your arms get all shaky when you bench press, you're going to want to watch this. By the way, if you don't want to watch the whole episode, you just want to get the fun clips, go to Mind Pump Clips on YouTube and just learn the stuff you want to learn and nothing else. All right, here comes the show. One of the best ways to manage your cravings is to manage your blood sugar levels. Here's a cool hack. Just two minutes of walking, that's it, two minutes of walking after you eat severely blunts your blood sugar spikes and crashes. So that's all it takes, two minutes. Now, two this minutes? is, this is a new, right? This is a new information. We we thought in the past that it took longer uh, or more exercise to lower the blood pressure, right? Isn't this blood kind sugar? Of, or blood, excuse me. Yeah, no problem. No, it's, uh, they just did some studies showing that even, even just standing up and sitting down, they'll, it'll affect the blood sugar. Now, two minutes of walking does a much more pronounced effect. And so people may be wondering, what's the big deal? Like, why would I want to? It's only two minutes. I'm not burning yeah. tons of calories, it's not a workout. So why do this anyway? Those, those blood sugar spikes and crashes influence our behaviors and they can make us feel irritable. They can increase cravings. They can give us hunger cues and behaviors that would drive obviously your eating habits. Mm -hmm. So one of the best ways to work with your behaviors is to control your blood sugar, it makes it easier to eat healthy, it makes you feel better, it makes you sharper, mm -hmm. less irritable, all those things. And well, it's just we've been voicing this for a long time. I mean, mainly just because of like the digestive uh, benefit that I yeah. received from like after a meal and just walking through it and getting everything kind of moving, you know, plays a, a you know, a massive uh, advantage there. Yeah, no, it makes a big role with, with digestion. It's uh, present in a lot of old cultures where people will walk um, after meals. I mean, I used to recommend people walk post uh, meal more so because it's an easy way to add activity right. because they're going to eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner anyway. So I'd say, hey, you know, do 10 minutes uh, after breakfast, lunch, dinner, just 30 minutes of walking a day that you've attached to, you know, normal activity. That's how it started for me was I, I uh, was during the time that I was prepping, it was the first time I'd ever like tracked steps and really try to like strategically increase activity over time. Why are you looking at me? I'm like, looking at your gloves. <laughs> <laughs> so distracting. Uh, What's going <laughs> on, dude? Bro. Just focus on gloves. Bro, Doug, I was, Doug is the man for coming through. I wasn't sure if he really ordered Bro, you or look not. like an assassin. I was so <laughs> I, this is probably the most excited I've come to work today. Uh, today was like the most excited day I've had. In hey, a long you're like time, that. But... You're like that kid. You get new shoes. You got to wear. Yeah. Right, Bro, right? come on. Tell me these vroom, things are vroom. not awesome. They look. You I look can't like wait an, to drive today. You look like an assassin. I'm so yeah. mad. I'm so mad. I you're drove the truck today. It's kind of out. lame to drive it in the truck. So I don't know if I'll use them today. But I can't wait to get so home. functional. <laughs> yeah. it's red stitching and everything, dude. I saw you smelling them earlier too. Check if they're real leather. Yeah, Doug got me real leather. It's the real. These are the real deal, man. Wow. And the, and the red stitching isn't like overdone or whatever. So, but back to my point. Yeah. Of, of, so you're for real going to wear those? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Your, your yeah. knuckles are nice. Yeah, and oh exposed. I swear. Well, when I drive, when I drive the SVR, I will. Not when I drive like the regular car. So, yeah. but so that. for real, every time you drive it, you're going to yeah. put those on. <laughs> yes. You're going to put Max in there. Get your, your yeah. Well, first of all, Max every stop, get, Max is going to rev it up. Yeah, yeah. He's been in that. Car. He's been in that car twice. So, so you're going to get in the car. I'm late. Put yeah. my gloves on. <laughs> and then drive? Yeah, wow. I mean, I'm going to keep them right there by the dash. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so yeah. as soon as I get on, <laughs> yeah. you know, why right. do you think you have a glove box, right? Oh, geez. Yeah, wow. There you go. That's really is, that, is that really the that name? Is, is that where it came from? Sure, of course. Box. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Well, Never because come. the original car, by the way, everybody, calm down. The reason why people wore gloves back in the day is because their hands were dirty because they'd work with their hands and they'd fix the car and crank it on. So they had a little glove box. Put your gloves on. You don't get your hand all dirty. Yeah. Okay, it made its way to the rich it. and famous later on yeah. to protect the steering wheel because the steering wheels were made of like real wood, real leather, suede, and the oils. And you don't want your, you and know, the oils. Insanely protective. <laughs> you don't yes. want, you don't yeah. want yeah. Justin's Geo fingers all over your steering <laughs> wheel. <laughs> Dangerously cheesy. Yeah, yeah. Hey, it gives me I, good grip. I, I bought these for Justin. He drives my car. You put yeah. the fucking gloves on. He drive my car, bro. <laughs> <laughs> hey, <laughs> didn't OJ? Didn't, didn't they get OJ acquitted from wearing his driving gloves? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Because the the gloves didn't. All right. Let's talk about blood sugar. I don't know. Back yeah. to what I was saying. So <laughs> back to my point was you had that creepy stare when I was yeah, trying to I, was, talk. I couldn't stop. <laughs> like, what is he doing? 
So I, I started tracking and I remember when, uh, you know, I was like strategically trying to add just activity because uh, over the course of a whole prep, I knew that one of the easiest ways for me to create the, the, the caloric deficit was just adding a little bit more movement every single yeah. day. And so I had to find like these little hacks on, you know, creating more activity. And one of those became this like, you know, 10, 15 minute walk after my meals. And as, on, as a side effect, I started to notice how well it made, like how good I felt yeah. afterwards. So the intention, I didn't go into it like, oh, I want my digestion to be better. Oh, I'm really, I was just like, I need to create more activity. The calorie was in, in burning calories. Yeah, that was like the strategy. Yeah. But it, it turned into this really cool hack of, I felt so much better. And then the second one, and I've, I've brought this up in the past, um, it became this really cool time to connect with Katrina. It just became this routine of instead of like eating eating dinner and plopping down on the couch and watching TV or doing something like that or getting distracted on my phone or something like that was like we would eat and then when we're done eating we would just you know put the electronics down and we go for a nice 10 to 15 minute walk yeah. and it just it started to guarantee this time every single day which seems like no big deal but I I, I bet you'd be surprised how many people go several days in a row of not carving out 10 solid minutes of, especially if you have kids, you understand, right? If you have kids, you can easily go two or three days in a row of like not having a 10 minute, just non-distracted conversation with your partner. And I found that we, it, it created this really cool, nice intimate bond. And so it would pair it as like- yeah, a, And, and, and uh, Justin mentioned um, digestion. You know, there, there's hip flexor muscles, like the psoas, for example, that kind of runs around or near the digestive system. And every time you take a step when you walk, it almost massages. Your digestive system allows food to process through. Plus, <laughs> gravity helps with digestion. In fact, when astronauts go to space, they a lot of them exhibit <clears throat> digestive issues because of zero gravity. So standing up, walking, moving, taking those steps. Every time you take a step, there's a little bit more pressure, you know, pushing down, helping the digestive process. Yeah, it moves it along. Yeah, so it's an old, it's actually an old piece of advice for people who have digestive issues, where people are constipated or have issues with like heartburn. Mm -hmm. I said, oh, go for, that was an old advice. Oh, go for a I walk noticed. after you eat. Yeah, that was a big help for me. I mean, uh, especially with the heartburn stuff because- yeah, it would just stay kind of trapped otherwise if I just was like sedentary after I'd eaten, especially like at night after a big meal for dinner. And then I'm sitting on the couch watching something on TV. It was just like inevitable. I'd be like laying down in bed and just uh, you could hear the gurgles and all that happen. Yeah. Well, so what do you think? Do you think that affects us metabolically even? Well, yeah, that, I mean, it's with blood sugar. I mean, that's a that's a clear one. You know, when we talk to- the because, it, because this also flies in the face of the whole calories in versus calories out all the time argument too because if you're so if you're you're telling me it affects me metabolically then then even if i had the same amount of calories but and it took the same person with the same activity but that one person decided to take a 10 minute walk after every single meal which sped up digestive the digestive yeah. process but if we looked at total calories consumed and all calories burned was e equal, you don't. Do you think that it would metabolically impact the person? Well, if they're equal, then no. But but it's not equal, right? The calories out part is constantly changing. Hormones affect it. Move movement affects it. Uh, mind you know mindset affects it. Stress that kind of stuff. So if you're if you're moving a little bit, you get the extra calorie burn. Let's forget that for a second though. If your blood sugar is better controlled, behaviors are changed. <laughs> So what kind of behaviors do blood sugar crashes and spikes lead to? Less activity, more irritability, more cravings. Cravings, yeah. Right. Um, and not just that, but then hormones themselves, things like testosterone and growth hormone. Uh, growth hormone, for example, is opposite yeah. insulin. Insulin goes up, growth hormone goes down, insulin goes down, growth hormone tends to go up. So that can also contribute to your body wanting to build more muscle or store more yeah. body fat. So it all plays a role. So that's why the whole calories in versus calories out, they have all those opponents who say, oh, it's not that, because what they point to is the fact that it's very complex, which is true. Mm. It is very complex, but still calories still count, but it is very complex. So well, what's your, your argument is that it's, it, you, it could potentially dramatically change the behaviors in that same, that same person. Totally. So the same person decides I'm going to just make sure I get a 10 minute walk after every single one of these meals. And even, uh, even if the calories consumed is the same, that's the only thing they change is doing that walk what it's potentially going to do aside from the calorie burn yeah. of the 10 minute walk is potentially promote better activity, better home run profile, better, the, better, better the operating system. Yeah. Well, look, I'll use myself as an example. If I eat something that causes the, these blood sugar spikes and crashes, I tend to afterwards not want to move, feel sluggish and tired. 
Then I start to get irritable. And then I start to have cravings again later on. Two, three hours later, I want more, you know, sugar or more palatable foods to get that blood sugar to come back up to make myself feel better. And then the cycle continues. This is why at NutriSense, um, when we had a young lady on the show who represents the company, that's why she said so it's a very effective strategy. If I look at someone's mm -hmm. oh, it's also why we're blood, invested in the company. Yes. Too. You look at someone's blood sugar connected to behaviors, people can connect it to and go, oh, that's why I feel like shit. At this point, that's why I have those cravings. Yeah, it's my blood sugar. It's my midday lull. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, so, and it's it's literally this is li we're literally talking about two minutes. They did these studies and found two minutes of a walk. It's that's literally you eat, you get up, you walk down the street and back, and you're done. And that is enough to show a measurable decline in blood sugar. Now you want to add another five minutes to it or whatever. That's awesome. Go for ten minutes. I think that's even better. But two minutes is nothing. That's yeah. nothing at all. Yeah. You know, spend I, more time no in the bathroom deal. afterwards. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I can do a lot of two minutes, you guys. E exactly. Anyway. So, <laughs> <laughs> to be honest. All right. Here's the giveaway for today's episode. MAPS split the bodybuilder routine that we have that so many people like. You can get for free, but you got to do this. Leave a comment below in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Subscribe to this channel. Turn on notifications. If we like your comment, we'll notify you in the comment section. Okay. That's what we'll notify you. That's your one. And then you get free access to MAPS Split. Also, we got a sale going on right now. Two workout bundles, 50% off. The first one is the Skinny Guy Bundle. It includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Aesthetic, the No BS Six Pack Formula, Intuitive Nutrition Guide, and the Occlusion Training Guide. All that, 50% off. The other bundle is the Fit Mom Bundle, which includes MAPS Anywhere, MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Hit, and the Intuitive Nutrition Guide. That's also 50% off. You can find both of these bundles at mapsfitnessproducts.com, but you have to use the code SEPT50 for the discount. Or click on the link at the top of the description below and get set up with the 50% off the Skinny Guy Bundle or the Fit Mom Bundle. All right, here comes the show. I really miss you guys, dude. You know, that? This, this is uh, one of the longest uh, stints that we went of not uh, hanging out together. I know. I know. I can't because normally, sucks. even when we do a vacation, uh, at least a pair of us or half of us or, you know, uh, the group are together. Yeah, are yeah. together. So I think this was one of the few times where we were a full, what, 10 days even or more away from each other. Yeah. You right? just keep coming yeah. back darker, dude. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you got a lot of sun out <laughs> there. Like, huh? Yeah, we did. I did get How a lot. How nice of, was it out there? It was beautiful. Yeah, it was like 82 to 84, like every single Bro, day. Bro, the sun literally was sitting on my it was like it was dude, it's so hot it was blazing here, i know man. i guess we so it was uh record heats right yeah. in san jose yeah when we when we left which we couldn't have timed I lost it. power three times yeah which is, which is really awesome all right especially after they tell us that they want so, all gas all gas cars gone yeah after 20 really powering up your my Tesla. how's this gonna work <laughs> my aunt and uncle uh are the ones who house sitted for us and they left um uh, what's the, it starts with a B? It's right over, right over the pass. I can't think, I think of it. Blueberries. Right. No, 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 no. The town, bro. Boobies. The town. I the know. town. I can't. Bakersfield? No, 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 no. It's right over where you're going over the Altamont over there. I cannot think of it oh, right now. I don't know. Uh, Burbank? Any, no. No. <laughs> These guys are terrible. You guys are all like. It's right. <laughs> Belgium, I'll, it's <laughs> it's it's heading like you're heading back towards the valley or whatever. Like Anyways, it was like 116 <laughs> degrees. Make up some shit at their house. 116. But they were in. They were at my place where it was like 72. Well, yeah, it's cool. Where yeah, you're so it only hit. I think I think it hit records for us over there at like 76, 78. Yeah. Didn't even hit. But. Dude, Death Valley broke. Uh, I guess a record. I think it was like 127 or something. Wow. Insane. Like it was like what? for the hottest. What. Uh, <clears throat> Like ever in North What's America. What's the hottest temperature you've ever experienced in like real life? 120. 120. 121 or 124. Yeah. We yeah. hit record heats going through Arizona when we moved to Colorado. There was people messing around, like frying bacon on their hoods and, and cooking eggs on the hood of it the car. It messed the like bottom of your shoes. Like if you stay in one place too long, yeah. like I noticed that at 120, it was like my shoes started to melt. Yeah, I was in Palm, Palm Desert. Yeah, um, that's where I was. When I went down there and the summer hit, and I remember it was like, you know, I'd, I'd go to work at 7 a.m. It was 90. And I was like, what's going to happen today? Oh, yeah. yeah, it was 110 degrees at like 10 o'clock at night on that day. Weird. Oh, like, weird. So, like, so 100, for, people have never experienced 120 degree heat. It's really weird. Like yeah. you, you hit the sun, you go outside and you're like, oh. Yeah, it's hard to do anything. Yeah. It's just, uh, it doesn't, it, that's attacked. the face. Yeah, that's you the feel face attacked. Right. Everywhere you go. <laughs> yeah. So I saw that you flew in a helicopter. Bro, with what? No, this with one no, right here, right? Yes. Like, I, I literally rode Wait, the, how does the he Magnum PI. Yeah, 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 it's small. just got it's inside. It's a helicopter for little people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Doug's helicopter. So you... <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Actually, Doug is the only one in the group that could ride in the front of this helicopter. Really? Yeah. They, they you had to weigh. You had to get on a scale and weigh yourself before. <laughs> so, so I did not make. Go, oh, you I know, didn't make. You know my heavy ass. I didn't make. I didn't make the front. None of us would. Yeah. Okay. Doug would be the only one allowed to sit in the front of the helicopter. We got the four propeller <laughs> helicopter for <laughs> yeah, Justin. Yeah. So, so what? So you? So what is? It's literally that one. It is literally and the there's Magnum. There's no door P on it. There's no doors on any of it. Wow. <clears throat> so when we were looking it up, so my uh, my my brother-in-law was the one who actually said, "I was like, bro, I've." actually really wanted to do that in hawaii for the longest time and he's like i'm so down if you are and i'm like yeah let's do it so we started like looking up all the and there's tons of them over there right in fact there was one in the resort that i was at <clears throat> there was a, a helicopter that took off from right there but a lot of them are these kind of like uh like luxury you know closed door they fit like six eight people like in them and stuff like that they're a little more expensive and I was reading on all these reviews and all, all the people that I was reading, all the reviews I was reading were saying that the like craziest, best experience is to do the, M, the you know, the MPI, whatever, yeah. you know, Magnum PI yeah. uh, helicopter because it has no doors on it. Those ones, <coughs> excuse me, are more maneuverable. And so you, you just feel more of it and you're hanging out of the helicopter. Now, do you get airsick? Because I would imagine it would, you, because you, you're taking <coughs> banks and... No, they don't really. <clears throat> they don't fly you like that. Like they're they 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 have a protocol. Or they have to be safe and okay. stuff like that. Was but it worth it? Yeah, it was well worth it. It was probably one of the coolest experiences that I definitely have ever done in Hawaii. I've been in Hawaii a bunch of times. That was one of the coolest. And it, it, afterwards, it it like I don't know why I didn't do it before because I was like, you know what? <clears throat> if I was ever going to do a helicopter ride, I can't think of too many places that would be cooler than flying around Hawaii just because the scenery oh, is it's like, gorgeous. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like you, I, you know, I thought about doing that like as like a romantic dinner thing with Katrina in the past, like where you fly in the city or something like that, which that would be cool to fly over the bay and, and things yeah. like that. But you have like a few things you're looking at that are really cool where when you're flying in Hawaii, you look left, you look right. And it is just gorgeous. You know, I feel, everywhere. I feel yeah. like, especially if you live on the West coast of the, of the U S you take Hawaii for granted because it's a part of the U S like if it's like the, one of the most beautiful places I've ever been to in my oh, entire yeah. life. It's, yeah. Well, it it rivals any tropical, anything I've ever been to. In fact, I think it's Kauai in particular is just so gorgeous. Oh, I love it. Yeah. And you forget, you're almost like, oh yeah, that's we have this. You know, yeah. this is a part. I've of been our wanting country. to do it. Courtney's been talking me out of it. Like, I think she was like younger, like in her teens when she went on a helicopter ride like over uh, Kauai, but like got super sick, and so she was just like, no, nah, I'm not gonna do it. So I mean, I'd, I'd be mean, lying if I didn't say I was a little scared. Yeah. Like it, not having the doors on there, and in those little ones, like the the wind would blow, and you would. Oh. You would feel the helicopter move. That's crazy. You know, so it's not, I mean, you fly in an a, a airplane, a jet, yeah. like, you know, you get a little bit of turbulence, right? Every once in a while, but it's like nothing, right? Like in the helicopter, the, as, and you, as you're flying around the island, if you've ever been to Hawaii, like there's a saying in Hawaii, right? Like uh, if you don't like the the weather in Hawaii, wait five minutes. Yeah. Cause right. It, Cause it's constantly changing. Yeah. And there's a lot of microclimates. Yeah, That's right. So you actually, as you're flying through this helicopter at, with the doors off, you feel all those microclimates. Like I would feel it go up 10 degrees and down 10 degrees. Oh, wow. cool. We went through a little bit of rain one time and then you feel like a little gust of wind. Like, so in that little helicopter, you felt every every movement, every different microclimate that you experienced going through there. And it took about 20 minutes, I'd say. It was an hour ride, and it took about 20 minutes for me to kind of relax. You have like this, oh shit bar. Yeah. You can, you know, you're hanging oh, on yeah, to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because all, I mean, with the, all that you have is this little lap belt and a one, like a seat belt that would be in a car holding you in. And that's the only thing keeping you from sliding out of this helicopter. <laughs> so you, you, I mean, it's, it's hard to not want to hang on to that the whole time just to feel safe. Now you didn't bring Max. You can't go. No, we didn't bring Max. Yeah, no, it was no. just me, my brother-in-law, my best friend. And then, uh, my brother-in-law met some chick ways out there and we let her come on the plane. Cause we actually rented the helicopter out to ourselves. Mm. Good move. And so we had an extra, yeah. yeah. yeah so, great way to sell it. Yeah, yeah, great power. Yeah, yeah. I don't think he sealed the deal still though. I'm like, bro, you got a helicopter. She got a helicopter yeah. ride. You didn't seal <laughs> the oh. helicopter. Come on, guy. It was funny. I was watching your story and like, as you guys were going to get on, like there was that kind of area where they were made it all like magnetic. And PI themed. Yes. And, and they had like pictures of Mary. It was just funny to me because it was like the red uh, Hawaiian shirt and all that. And the, like my dad literally dressed like that for years. That's why I sent it to you yeah. because I know he won the Tom Selleck award and everything yeah. like that, like for the lookalike. And I thought he would appreciate all that. So I sent it to you. Yeah. So I didn't realize that 
when that show first came out, they were they used to be called like a different helicopter. I forget the he told me the name of the company before, and they changed it to that just as a marketing scheme. Oh yeah, and it it was so successful that now like because I guess they have remakes of Magnum PI that are that are being made still or whatever. Really? That? Yeah, there's there's one. There's I, an, I think, from one of the guys from <clears throat> that that show Lost. I think was like co like starring. In yeah, it. they have. They, it's it's still running. And they actually come over. In fact, I think it was like in two weeks, he was like, yeah, they, they come over here and they shoot all the time and they use our helicopters and stuff because- wow. So it's it's created all kinds of- Tom Selleck, wasn't he? He was considered like the sexiest man for a long time. <clears throat> yeah. Like a long time. Every dude was like growing their chest hair out just so. You know, like, so he made it cool to be up. hairy. Yeah. Was you know, it him or Burt Reynolds that did that first? They both were. Ooh. It was that era, I think Burt dude. was first. Yeah. I think Burt was first. Remember, he yeah. did the famous rug, yeah, where the, naked, naked. the naked rug thing, right? Yeah, on the yeah. rug. Yeah, yeah. Was uh, it, what was that from? Or what was it? Playgirl magazine, Playgirl? I think. Oh, yeah. it was? It was yeah. a Playgirl Doug thing, right? it. Wasn't yeah. that? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I have 10 copies. <laughs> Doug's getting roasted today. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> hey. We're just getting started, too, Doug. Hey, I look forward to it. We missed you. I can tell. You have a funny way of showing it. No, 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 no. No, yeah, he was, for a long time, he could continue to be like the sexiest man up until he was like in his 60s. This guy was a big deal. Tom so, Selleck. Yeah. He's still doing like Blue Bloods, right? Like he was doing that show for a while. I think so. Yeah. Now, the Ferrari he drove, that's what I remember. Yeah. That, well, was, that the, was, what was that? The GT3 legit. something or whatever? Yeah, they had that in there. Yeah. So they had it in there. You, you could know, have, you by could the way, got in it and like done all kinds of By like the way, if you stuff. take those supercars from the 80s <clears throat> today, they would get they would get crushed by the like fast Civic. sedan. Yeah, on the street now. I, yeah, it was like zero to sixty in like five point something seconds. Well, I mean, I think just in the last, you talk about cars. Everything is like six hundred. The last now. decade in cars has just been insane. Yeah, I mean, I mean, zero to sixty back in the days was like fast. Was I mean, there's songs if you listen to like zero to sixty in five point seven. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. that was like super. Now cars are doing like two seconds. I know. You yeah. know what I'm saying that's it's, crazy. I know it's wild. Actually, I saw Doug. You can look this up. There's actually a really cool thing on your point to Ferrari. Look up uh, Ferrari's zero to sixty quarter mile evolution, and you can actually. Yeah. I've actually looked this up before, and it's like crazy how oh. how how dramatic it's been in the last like. But there's, 10, still, I mean, years. obviously, it's still a collector. That that particular Ferrari is uh, one of my favorites. Just when I was a kid, that's yeah. what we saw on TV. I mean, it doesn't rival the, the best Ferrari of all time for me is um uh what's Testarossa Bueller's they oh, the oh, yeah, yeah. yeah the old no one. the old one that was like a, oh yes you're I know what you're talking about yeah yeah that one that's sixties I think uh, that's model. that one's worth like millions isn't dude, it dude it's so sexy that it's, one yeah. it's gorgeous yeah. gorgeous car. Anyway, I love that car. Yeah, we yeah. we what we did all week is because we didn't go anywhere, so we kind of did like day dates and stuff. So we had the nanny come and hang out for mm -hmm. most of the day. And it's whole, it's super funny because the first day she came, we're like, hey, why don't you come at eight like nine and stay till like three PM? So Jessica and I go, ah, oh, we get some brunch and hang out. And it's hilarious because we look at the clock and it's like one PM. We're like, damn, I want to take a nap. Like, but we can't go home. The nanny's there. What are we going to do? She's like, why did I book her for so long? I'm like, I know. We're so old. We're so like, in a park. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We were like, maybe we should just go to the movies and go take a nap in the movies. Oh, so yeah, funny, dude. We were so That's why we, so we, uh, we, the deal that we made was that we took care of Katrina's brother's trip, right? To come to Hawaii so he could actually watch Max. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. Although I would say, I spent most of my time with Max because like Hawaii is like, was a cool place mm. to be with him and spend most time. But what it was nice was most all evenings we would put him down and then her and I would like we were where we were at. Oh, these, that's nice. You guys there was a, a, a bar, right? There was an outside bar and restaurant that was like right on the villas that like like a stone throw away. We would just we leave her and uh, or leave him with the kids, and then us us four or us two couples would go have drinks at the bar and go eat and stuff like that. And he would kind of lay back and just make sure the kids stayed down. And I love the it. seafood over there. Do you have good seafood? Oh yeah, dude. I mean, I you know, tell you what, <clears throat> what was really cool. So we stayed on North Shore, so Turtle Bay area. I don't know how familiar you guys are with o Oahu or not, but Waikiki is the popular area. Right, right, right. We're on the complete opposite, direct opposite North Shore, where the famous Sunset Beach is, okay. which is more like the local cool place right now they do have turtle bay resort which is right where we were at so we were at turtle bay and we we're in these ocean villas right there the, but i'll tell you what was one of the coolest experiences going there this is the first time i'd stayed there every day i ate at this truck stop so and i remember going there so the last time i went to oahu was was quite a while ago especially on the north shore they had this little area that had like i don't know maybe like five five to ten like uh 
you know, truck food, you know, that, that, mm. that they, they park, you know how they do like over here in the Bay area where like four yeah, or five yeah, of them come. Yeah. Okay. So this area has been there for a long time, but it, I hadn't seen it in almost a decade and it's like expanded. It's huge. There was probably 35 to 40 of these trucks in this huge, these multiple parking lots that were all yeah, attached. I bet, I bet the food's yeah. Oh, in Incredible. Yeah. I mean, absolutely incredible and everything you could possibly think of. And it's being, you know, cooked in these trucks. The best fish tacos I've ever had in my life was literally this tiny little yeah, hole in the wall. There's a kitchen in there. It was like this tiny little hole in the wall place on the road in quiet. We yeah. pulled over and I ate them. I'm like, this is the best. They're so cool. They've converted like school buses and old like Greyhound buses that are like super old that have turned into full blown kitchens. I mean, they're designed to stay there. They don't move, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. But I mean, we ate there every single day at least once or twice. I never ate the same thing twice, and every experience was phenomenal. Like, mm. not one did I go oh, like, wow, oh, that fun. sucked. It was like, damn, should I eat that again, or I want to try something new because there's so Your much. trucks have gone, like, oh, gone a long way. Like, I, they're, they're, There's so many options now. Well, it's, it was so cool that it's worth staying there just to experience that for a week. Well, as a, just bu to try all as a business, it makes yeah. sense. If you're a chef and you work at a restaurant and you do a good job and you want to own, you have dreams of owning your own restaurant, mm -hmm. like a truck yeah. is lower Proving overhead. Concept. Yeah, lower overhead. You're not going to be paying, signing a crazy lease. You have you yourself and maybe one other person helping you. So it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So that's why they blow move up. around. I mean, Austin it was cool about that too. They had a lot of different like food truck places yep. where they all have uh, options. I'm but sure yeah. California has a bunch of restrictions around it. Well, they do, but I think after the pandemic and all that, like there was, uh, so even in Scotts Valley, they have every like uh, first week of, of the month, it was like on a Thursday or whatever, like they have food trucks out at this one park and there's like 20 or 30 of them. And so it's like a thing now that just stuck because it's like the same thing. It's like, there's just so many cool options. For yeah. Oh. No, it, it, it made like uh, the trip itself, like worth going there just to do that. I was like, Man, I could have just huh. done that every day, hang out at the pool and the beach, come experience different food like that every day. That's like, my favorite part of vacation. Yes, oh though. yeah, it, always. It was a real, it was really, yeah. really, really good vacation. On that and you know, uh, and I was really worried on the flight, right? Because it was it's nine hours of travel, dude. I mean, you figure five to six hours, so six hours one way, five hours the other way, right? So six hours of flight time. You have to get to the airport two hours early when yeah. you're traveling that far, and then basically an hour to get your luggage and get out sure. of there, right? So basically nine hours of travel for a three-year-old. And so- How did he do? He did great. So I had, did you guys see my little, my my flying hack? No. Oh, you didn't see it? So <clears throat> I don't know where I had come up with this. I'd seen somebody else do this for something else. I thought, oh, this would be perfect for the hack because he's at this phase right now where last year, and you're coming up on this real soon here. Like, I think this is the Christmas where your son will probably be more into Christmas, mm -hmm. like opening presents. Since that, he's like so into just unwrapping stuff. And I've told you my mother-in-law gets him something like every time she sees him and he just, he loves the unwrapping part. He doesn't give a shit. It could be a 99 cent coloring book or whatever. So Katrina and I wrapped a present for every hour. So we went down to like Target. I think she went to Target and got a coloring book, a little egg toy, like, you know, a little puzzle thing, like oh, all these little smart. cheap toys. And we, we wrapped them. And then we we never let him see him, so we kept him in another bag. And then, you know, we try to keep him entertained and happy, either iPad or eating or doing games or doing other stuff. And then whenever he'd kind of get antsy, right before he'd start to get at all fussy or anything like that, Katrina would be like, do you want a present? And he'd be like, yeah, present? And then he'd, he'd give him a present. He'd, <laughs> yeah. he'd open the present, be all excited, and then he'd play with that toy for like an hour. You might be creating a, a, wow. a an association that's going to bite you in the ass. I, maybe. You know what I'm saying? We're I, going on a trip, <laughs> Dad? Yeah. Oh, you know, right. I, and I thought about that, right? I thought like, wow, what, you know, is my son going to want a present every single time he flies? That's going to be ridiculous. No, I don't think that. so. He's young. As he gets older. I, exactly. Like I, I think this is only a, a really good hack from maybe two <laughs> to four years old. If he acts up too much, open this one. Benadryl. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Try it. Yeah, I'm young. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it, it wasn't like an expensive thing. Like you literally could go to a 99 cent store yeah. and just get it's things. just it's, excitement of something. New. It is it's the excitement yeah. of not knowing what's in there. And in fact, I, I wrapped a, a sticker book that I'd already bought him before. You know what I'm saying? That he had, He's even know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's just, I, I was going through the drawers. I'm like, Oh, I need one more gift, one for an hour. And I'm like, Oh, here's a sticker book that he never opened. <laughs> so I just wrapped a present that he's that's already hilarious. opened before. Yeah. <laughs> nice, are, are you guys, dude. are you guys watching all the stuff that's coming out right now on streaming? It's like a bunch of stuff that like uh, rings of power. Dude, I'm yeah. 
yeah. so behind. I'm in, I'm into that. I'm into the new Game of Thrones, uh, which uh, it, it's actually picking up. It started out actually. I, I enjoyed it from the get go. Courtney was out because it was so brutal. Like they did. You were saying classic Game of Thrones where they're just like smashing heads and like cutting off limbs and whatnot. And then like I'm up to like the the fourth episode, I believe, is the latest one, and it's like. It was like straight up debauchery porn. Like it, it got crazy. Like they're they're going hard uh, this season. Like, uh, is it getting good ratings? Um, I don't know. I haven't read anything about it yet, mm -hmm. but I've just been watching it. And it's really good. So I was super looking forward to the Rings of Power. I'm yeah, a huge Lord of the Rings fan, and uh, it's kind of boring. Yeah, yeah and I, I could, watched one episode. I could tell they're trying to build the characters. So yeah. I'm I'm still watching. I'm still loyal. I'm like, okay, let's come to work through this. But it's a little bit. It's a little bit boring, and I didn't realize that there's God, man. Uh, Tolkien created the craziest like world in so intricate detail. Like I didn't know in the beginning. So the, the Har Harfoots are in the beginning, the first episode. Mm -hmm. They look like little hobbits. Yeah, they're like hobbits. those are ancestors of hobbits. Oh uh, yeah. So hobbits aren't even don't even exist during this time. What's it like nine hundred or thousand years? Thousand years before. Okay. Yeah. So it's so. So that was sort of the disconnect, right? Because it's like all new characters so they're not yeah. like any familiars really and uh and so you've gotten further into it so they introduce yeah. anybody that's like a familiar face gandalf okay. they, you know he comes in and at first i didn't know it was gandalf uh, i don't want to give away too many spoilers but yeah. so it's kind of interesting okay it, it is kind of interesting but it's not uh, hasn't still grabbed not, grabbed yet not yet dude yeah. i see i haven't watched it because i feel like both those have such deep plots that i need to be able to watch a few of them in a row because if i Certain, you know how that is. Like certain shows, you're on point, actually. No, certain show, so. certain shows, you can watch, and I can leave it for three weeks, come back, pick up, and feel like I mm -hmm. pick. And shows like Game of Thrones and yeah. Lord of Rings have such deep plots with so many connecting parts and different yeah. worlds or centuries, uh, and like, it's like that. If I if I lose track of where I was at, no, I, that's a good point. So I I've actually been saving them to like get all the way out, and then I'm like, I told Katrina because yeah. I don't think she's interested in it. I'm gonna like probably one day when she's not around binge through some of them because it just i i started to watch the teaser and i'm like oh my god i'm yeah. like lost on the teaser on what where where this is taking me in time and who who the characters yeah, are I've been like doing that with game of thrones it's yeah you kind of go back and you're like how is this related to you know this family and there's just so many different families and so many different characters and it's crazy and plus you know they they dabble with a lot of like fucked up themes you know like incest and all these other things you're just like Ugh. and it's so it's like it, it, you gotta be in the right mood to be able to take that kind of content in what kind of know? mood do you gotta be in? <laughs> <laughs> i don't know i don't know you gotta, <laughs> it, like oh like so you everything know, in the world's so messed up like might as well, this makes know, sense hey Courtney, you know what i'm in the mood for yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let's watch some you, 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 let's, let's watch some you can never justify it but <laughs> it's just like hey you know it's uh it's there. Hey, speaking of like uh, re related and, and all oh, that okay. stuff, so <laughs> so the I queen, the queen of England died, right? So uh, a lot of strange controversy oh, around that. So you um, yeah, I'm, I'm sure you guys have heard, right? Yeah, yeah, no, I've seen, I've seen both, right? I've seen people doing posts that are were celebrating her life and doing. In fact, the NFL did a big old thing on her, but then the the whole audience booed. Right, so the NFL did like it's, a, it's because a tribute to her, but yet the arena booed. It's really? the whole booed? like it's yeah. the whole like royalty thing, and so here's what's interesting to me: there's this meme that's going around showing how so King Charles now, right? They're, they're, he's now the king. He now inherits their wealth, so it's like I don't know how many billions of dollars that that the royal family has. He now inherits all of it, and through a special law, he pays no inheritance tax. Now in the UK. There's a 40% inheritance tax. For everybody else. Everybody else. Now, here's where here's where uh, I think people are funny. Because here, predictably, what do people say? They need to pay 40%. I'm like, why aren't you guys saying you should pay zero? It should be the other <laughs> way around. <laughs> Not like you need to pay. They need to pay what I'm paying. You need right. to look at it and go, we should have zero yeah, percent inheritance tax. Same deal. Yeah, you look know? Me up. That's the part that makes me laugh. So what are they worth? 34 billion? Wow. Yeah. Thirty-four. Wow. So does dollars. okay. I know nothing about, and I give literally zero shits about like the royal family like stuff. But um, it, so Megan and and this whole thing with them going to like Canada, but now all of a sudden with Charles them being related, like they have 
the lineage now to the throne. No somehow. idea. I, okay, I no thanks. Idea. I'm yeah, my, my in-laws are English, and this is a big deal to them. So yeah, I, I, you know, they they really made a big deal about this whole thing. Now, where are they on? Because I I feel like they, it's, oh, the, I mean, they <clears throat> they love the queen. Oh, they love they her. love it. It's like I mean, it's your if you're English. I, I'm you know I'm gonna generalize, okay? But I guess if you're English, it's a big deal. It's your it's heritage. She was valued quite a bit because See, she so was relatively neutral. She wasn't super political. She. Uh, I guess she did a lot of good things, and she yeah, acted in ways her. that she, were, um, uh, I guess, pretty progressive. So, did you see the tweet? The the tweet that the teacher from what I forget what uh, was Harvard or Stanford or uh, one of those one of the one of the big schools tweeted out Jeff real Bezos, nasty tweet, yeah, a real right? nasty yeah. tweet about her, and then Jeff Bezos responded. That. Did you see that? No. Right, you go. Uh, Jeff Bezos responds to uh, Queen death tweet, uh, and then you'll see who who it was. So yeah, th th what I find interesting is you. So you say she's so beloved, but then you have people in America who are like just enraged by her that are putting out tweets and saying things of how oppressive that she was. Well, you know what's interesting? So I years ago, so this isn't now, but years ago, I had a friend who was English, really good friend of mine, and I would tease him like, oh, you, you know, we would talk shit back and forth, like, oh, you you English still have royalty, like. Wh who cares? Whatever he goes, you guys have celebrities here in America. Yes, yeah, it is the same thing. He's like, why, how the hell are some of these celebrities so rich? Why? Because you guys just give them money because they're famous. I'm like, oh, well, I guess it's not that different. <laughs> well, that's an interesting is, way to that's an interesting thing. way to spin it. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's not that different. It's weird. As humans, we like we like to have we like to put people on pedestals for uh -huh. some reason. Yeah, it's and strange. worship them. You yeah. know what I mean? And this is just an extension. That's of actually that. really yeah. a fascinating way to look at it. So, do they not in the UK not have like? Su like super mega yeah, stars do, and, and movie stars, they do also. But okay, they but well, they treat the royalty. But point. they but they treat the royalty like, like the, they're. But they're, it's they're, interesting because they all like like so Elton John got knighted, right? Yeah, it's, like it's like a big like, deal. It's all like intertwined with like it's yeah, a part of the culture. Yeah, the does culture. it say anything there, Doug? Yeah. So there is this professor professor Uju Anya. Yeah, uh, I think she's from Africa, who. Wished that she had an excruciating oh, death, right? right. And because then, of why she was a colonizer. Yeah, yeah. and so Bezos uh, responded back, and uh, that's where the controversy. What is. was his response? Uh, this is someone supposedly working to make the world better. I don't think so. Wow, that's his response. Mm. Oh, I see. Yeah. You know, here's here's the deal. Uh, if you you talk to any, I don't care what culture you're you're from, your culture. Kick someone else out, I know. or 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 know. you know, yeah. fought someone and won, or it's just the history of the world. Yeah. Um. So it's and I get it, but it, so that's no, the part. Okay. Owns so a country that, blood. this is the part that obviously I didn't I didn't comment on any of this because I don't know. Like I don't. So was she specifically oppressive as a as a ruler and a leader, or was it her family lineage that it's was? It's a lineage. Because, the lineage, that's yeah. stupid. That's like blaming me for something that my great great grandfather did. When it's like fuck, like, judge me on my character, yeah, like really. what I'm doing, not what you know someone and, did. And, and by the way, two hundred years ago. By the way, family. you go back and you find anybody's great great grandfather, especially the context of the you know of the time, they did some shit. <laughs> some oh, yeah. shit. Some so dark, this is a tweet. I said, I heard the chief monarch of the of uh, thieving, raping, genocidal empire is finally dying. Yeah. May her pain be excruciating. It's so, okay, so here's the deal. It's so hypocritical because wherever this woman is from, I guarantee yeah. whoever's there now did the same thing to people before that and before that and before that. So it just, yeah, that's literally the history of the world. Somewhere, yeah. it's, not a, it's not a culture, uh, you know, or a, a country problem. It's a human issue. And it's just how humans are. Not, I'm not just, by the way, I'm not, uh, you know, <clears throat> trying to say it's okay. No. It's just what people do. And we've done it forever. Um, and we get better. We're better at it now. We're not, we're not so, you know, we don't go and conquer places like we used to. Um, at least not the ways that we used to. So no. I don't know. Very interesting. Anyway, Justin, I want to, I want to see those glasses. I know you put them on the table. Yeah. But I think you need to show everybody how nice they look yeah. on your face. So oh, these are the, geez. these are the Felix Grays that I like the most. We're supposed to talk about them right now, and I, I figured the best way to sell them is to show your face. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to model. Like, you know, uh, Doug pull up their. Dude, we pull up their website real quick. They actually just dropped. They actually dude. just dropped three new lenses. Uh, there's the, uh, they have like the clear Faraday's, and then there's two other. Uh, Which ones are the ones he has, Jemison? 
Yeah, Jemisons. those are the Jemisons. Those are for fat I don't faces. Think... <laughs> yeah, yeah. They you don't do... make the clear ones. For they the don't fat make faces. for bird faces yeah. like you. You have to wear like yeah. the Nash. Oh my God! You just <laughs> had to get both of us. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. He has a big head. You have a fat face. Yeah, I do have. A, I do right. have a fat face. I'm but, yeah, cheeks, but I have a dude. narrow fat face. He's yeah, got yeah. like a fat. You're fat narrow face. with cheeks. I'm like a. I'm a round <laughs> like a grapefruit. Yeah. I have like a small fat face. He's got like a big. fat face. Well, you know what I like. Okay, so have you guys seen other people's blue light blocking glasses? So I was at a buddy's house, and he's like, "Oh, I." wear blue light blocking and he puts them on yeah. like they look terrible yeah they bro. suck right who's gonna go to those? the top go to the oh, top yeah, Doug. We're super the, dorky how come yours doesn't have what mine have when i clicked on the website mine i'm not mine sure showed, mine shows the all so the that, new new glasses yeah you can see some of those clear one frames <laughs> yeah uh, they, see, that's new, the new let thing. me search for you doug all right they're yeah, the best could. they're the best looking blue light blocking glasses by far and and like i mean i think you can see when you look at justin besides how handsome he is they don't change yeah. uh they're not orange you know or red um, which I don't know if you wear blue light blocking glasses and watch TV and it's orange, it kind of ruins the TV experience. Yeah, you're a little sleepy too. Yeah. Which is the biggest, uh, that's the biggest objection I get, uh, you know, from those. Anyway, Damn. speaking of new technology while you look, Oh, speaking of glasses, by the way, I just remember. So off air, J Doug and I were talking about this. You guys didn't read comic books when you were kids, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did. You did? Yeah. Okay. Come you on. remember in the back, the ads for, there was always ads for x-ray glasses? X-ray glasses. <laughs> I had those. Did you buy them? Yeah. What a ripoff. So, oh, total ripoff. <laughs> it was a freaking <laughs> what a rip -off. Yeah. They, they had were, like a little hole no shit, and then huh? like the <laughs> swirly, <laughs> yeah, colored. <laughs> but also, also Lens. think about how creepy of a thing you're advertising. Hey guys, right. would you like some, and they would show a picture of a woman wearing a dress yeah. and you could see through it. Yeah. And guys bought that shit. Oh, totally. How creepy. What is was that? the other one where you, you can like see around corners? Oh, that was different. Do you know what I'm saying? I'm those were dope. I had those. Yeah, they had, like had the mirrors. Had the mirrors on the side. Yeah. Those were cool glasses. What about the sea monkeys? You guys ever buy the sea monkeys for the from the back of the? I did. Yeah. What? Yeah. Those are just like those brine are... shrimp or something yeah. like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Something yeah. weird. Like... What was that? They're like brine shrimp or something like that. Like little shrimp. Uh, the ad would say suspect, raise to be like raise sea monkeys, and, and they have pictures of these human looking water creatures. They, right? Yes. I thought, wow, that's pull be up amazing. an ad, Doug. Put put yeah. uh, old sea monkeys ad. I and it worked as a kid. You'd buy it. You'd look at this and be like, I want these weird creatures. To yeah. Raise them, and it's yeah. just little brine shrimp that you pour in water. Yeah, they'd sell that and like magic stuff. Like you, you get like. Um, I don't know, whatever, like card deck, like tricks and like all that kind of stuff. They they would sell all kinds of gimmicks in, yeah, the, in the back. The back of bodybuilding magazines were almost as bad, by the way. Yeah. Some of the ads in the back were ridiculous. Yeah, look at this. I specifically remember that ad right there. Yeah. Wow. For sure. Only a dollar. Well, because like Charles Atlas, too, didn't he? He, uh, he actually had a workout program. Yeah. No, I'm talking about. Well, that has to be like the worst ad ever. Comics. Look at the, the, the print. You need a magnifying glass to read what it's what it's advertising. Well, I mean, it's it's old. That's an old. Uh, that's got to be from the seventies, maybe, <laughs> or even earlier, or even earlier. Yeah, I used to buy comic. books. You hoped books. it was Brian Shrimp, by the way. There, <laughs> I used to buy comic books uh, that were old. So I'd go to this comic book store and buy some from the sixties and so, but they were cheap because they weren't you know they weren't like valuable ones. Yeah. But I used to love getting those really really old ones. Yeah, those were always in like I had the Archie. Uh, comics, you know, those are stupid. Did but. you read? Because uh, I, I was in love with Veronica. Hold, uh, of course. Yeah. Did you guys read uh, Mad? Mad? Was it called yeah, Mad, Mad Libs? You, like, no, Mad. Cracked. Mad. Oh, yeah. no. I did Mad Libs. I remember doing the Mad Libs. Yeah, like that, Spy right? versus Spy and all that shit. Yeah. That was super good. Totally. Yeah, super good. Anyway. Yeah. All right. Some new technology stuff that I just read about. So, Russia. Uh, announced that they're going to be they're going to be releasing a combat suit for their soldiers that can take a fifty cal bullet. What? Yeah, dude. So they're well, we're they, getting closer and closer to Halo. Oh my god, dude! These these suits sound crazy. That apparently can support your body weight, give you extra strength. Comes is it with its own water. Exoskeleton or is it? Just it's like this, it's like a full on suit that you put like over a, your like body. a Halo, right? Like a Halo yes. outfit. Yes. Right? Yeah. Wow. Yes. It come has its own water filtration system, its own air filtration system. It, it stores. It, it gives you extra strength, look like an exoskeleton. And then if you shoot it with a 50 cal bullet, you it know doesn't what's, penetrate I, it. Okay, so we've had the, this technology, I feel like, for a long time. I've actually always wondered why we haven't created like Halo-type looking soldiers. They're expensive. 
that hasn't stopped us from creating shit in the past. Well, <laughs> it has. Shit in the it, past. Well, mass production. <laughs> yes. But, yeah. That's if you're thing. gonna if you're gonna put it's a bunch novel. of you're gonna put a bunch of marines on the ground and you're gonna give give them all well, no, I mean, dollar suits. Okay. Well, not a bunch of marines. How about uh, twelve seals? Yeah, the seals. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, they get to experiment <laughs> guys, with it a lot. I remember you yeah. guys watch a lot of movies. <laughs> we had twelve specially trained <laughs> <laughs> super soldiers, uh, bro. And we <laughs> hey, we build jets that cost like billion dollars, Avengers bro. Love. Like you, you, you can't tell me we can't build a couple Halo suits. For a couple SEAL teams and I'm see sure how they we, work. <laughs> I'm sure we can. We probably do already. We just don't announce it? it. Okay, so there was um, uh, the one Navy SEAL that was transgender uh, was on Joe Rogan. He was talking about like they would literally try out a lot of these like yeah. de developing like ideas and and would report back. And so they would actually you know would either make more of them or they would like uh you know try out like brand new technology nobody else had access to yeah it. you have to have a combination of uh, is it stealthy does it allow movement uh is it going to be expensive what's going to power it yeah i guess you're right i mean something the it's seals the seals go in and, and you know i remember one of the first things that i thought was surprising to me learning about seals was i just always imagined like seals being like these massive big muscular dudes no, and they're like normal. 160 pounds yeah. right and it makes sense when you think of like they're they are trying to be stealthy and they stamina need stamina. Yeah, just, yeah, right. That makes sense. You wouldn't want this big meat. Also, dude, though, I mean, which means you probably wouldn't want a big, uh, yeah, bulky big target. Yeah, right? a big bulky suit that makes noises. And shit. We're going. It's like we're going back in time to medieval times with armor. <laughs> yeah, you know I mean? Totally, that's what it feels uh, but like. But the the robots that we're coming out with, they're gonna. I mean, they're gonna make that shit obsolete real quick. As soon right. as you have robots on the on the on the battlefield, forget about it. We're gonna need those suits to battle the robots, though. Let's be honest. Well, I mean, or just create your own robots. But yeah, that's judgment for, day, dude. That's for sure gonna happen. Uh, I don't know if you guys see these drone planes that they're that they're flying. Like you were on a plane. Mm -hmm. In fact, I was talking to my son about this. We were talking about Top Gun. Yeah. And the G's that you have to withstand. Yeah. And I said, yeah, Justin got to nine G's, and he's like, what was that like? And I told him how you know you explained how it felt like every yeah. particle of your body was separating. Like you're just being like. Comp like squeeze. I, you know what? I actually a better way to describe it now is like trying to tell somebody this not too long ago. Is like, imagine if like King Kong just grabbed you and then just squeezed you like a little like you know with one of those dolls where your eyes pop out. You know, and that's what it felt. Yeah. Like. So I told him that, and then I said, you know, they have drones. <laughs> They have drones that'll be hitting 15 G's. I love how your, your analogy is like compared to something that doesn't exist. You know what it's like? If you've ever thought about King exist. Kong squeezing you. Yeah. Everybody's seen it, Adam. Yeah, I, I mean, I picture it. I'm with you, Justin. I'm with you on that, Justin. Thank Not you. one person can report yeah. on what that's yeah. like to feel. No, that. yeah, exactly, because it's like. But well, you imagine it. Yeah, you, you imagine uh, it. Yeah, I get you're it. trying I get to it. describe yeah. something that. Well, you know, talking about technology and something that, because all that shit is not going to affect the daily person, but this will that I thought was really interesting is the new uh, minimum wage, and I'll tell you how I'm getting there. Right with the moving up to what twenty two. Oh, for, for fast food restaurants. For fast food restaurants, in California. That California is passing right now. So it, this this law, the more you look into it, the more this new wow. bill, the crazier it gets. So first off, it's going to be twenty two dollars an hour minimum wage, and it only applies to national chain restaurants that have over a hundred locations. Right. So if you're a mom and pop store, then you go down to fifteen. If you're McDonald's or Burger King. So basically what they're doing is they're going to, they're adding additional pressure to speed up the automation process. Right. Because that's exactly what's going to happen. They're already automating. That's what's going to happen. Yeah. You're yeah. just going to replace them and, and just have like one manager managing much machines. It's so dumb. It's 100% going to It's go not going to help. help anybody. It's, it's going so to put a, a ton of people out of work in, in hopes that they're going to get paid for, uh, you're going to get paid a little bit more money for a short period of time, but all that's going to do is force the hand of McDonald's you, and Burger King. You, you, you get these automated machines, you amortize them or whatever, so you make payments. It's going to be cheap than paying 22 bucks an hour and you got employees that'll do whatever you want. Whatever I mean, they were want. already moving in this direction already. I mean, you it's see just now, making it fast. You, go, you go to like these fast food restaurants and a lot of them are, are getting rid of the, the cashier anyway. So the next is to get rid of the people that are flipping the burgers and they've already they've already got the technology to do it. So it probably just didn't make sense financially. All they're doing is, is forcing the hand of, of these. Well, what a lot of people companies. don't realize is when you raise the floor for labor, so you take the bottom rung and you raise it up higher legally, what you or make it law, so you can't pay anyone less than X amount. You've made everybody whose skills are worth le worth less than that unemployable. Yeah. So meaning, if you're you got a prison record, and, you don't in have any education, that, experience, and in addition you're to not that, get a job. you just increase 
asset prices and inflate everything else. So it's like it just the rich get richer in that situation. The poor get poor in that situation. Yeah, absolutely. It's such a, a, it's people have no, it's so funny when people that, that, that vote for these, these things to get passed. Well, it sounds they, and it feels good right out the gate. Yeah. Cause it, cause, you know why? Cause they can only, they only see 10 feet in front of them. Yeah. It's just like, Oh, right now I make $12 or $15 an hour. Like, this is awesome. I'm going to get a raise to 22. Well, yeah, you moron, but you probably won't have a job fucking two years later. And the, your idea of saving up to buy a house, Else, that'll all be inflated up even higher. So yeah. it's just like it just got further away from you. And yeah. You no and then idea. what happens if you take that and really go extreme with it? And a lot of places have done this uh, in other countries is they'll pass laws protecting um, certain ways of uh, of being. So, for example, there's uh, let's say there's a town in a country that makes carpets and they're really nice, intricately made carpets. And then someone invents a machine that does it very well. So they could charge less cheaper, much cheaper. The workers there then lobby together, vote or get the government to ban the machines so that way they can keep their jobs. Well, now you've reduced the ability to produce more efficiently and you're actually crushing the wealth uh, and productivity of that particular area mm -hmm. to save a few, you know, jobs or whatever. So it, there's, there is a trade-off and the trade-off is you progress slower. Yeah. So that's what they're going to do with these, with these particular laws. Did you listen to the conversation that the all in podcast had about this? Yeah. I thought it was really interesting. What, um, uh, what's Freeberg was talking about as far as, you know, initially they do lose their jobs inevitably, but then that now it opens up the doors for somebody else to create. Oh, you mean because machines are doing work? Yes. Oh yeah. There's no, by the way, they've been saying for a long time that, um, that markets and capitalism will lead to no jobs, um, because of innovation, but that's, that won't happen. It's, it, it creates more efficiency. And if there is this fictional future where machines do all the work for us, that's actually kind of utopia, right? So now nobody has to work. And um, so, no, that's not that's not going to happen. And if it did, we've reached now the pinnacle of wealth creation and taking care of ourselves where nobody has to work because machines do everything. Right, because it, the, the thousands of Somebody's jobs- Somebody's got to upkeep the machines. Yeah, somebody uh, the, it's yeah, in order to create like, all those and to upkeep all those. It's flawed. Yeah, yeah. yeah the and the technology. And you, you just need to be more skilled or skilled differently type yeah, of deal. Yeah. Anyway, speaking of skills- uh, NCI, so NCI is the, the online coaching or fitness coaching company we work with, has a crazy giveaway, which Doug just showed me. They're giving away a full scholarship. So you can enter to win a full scholarship. And Doug, if you can click on the link. Isn't there more than that? What's all coming with it? Uh, oh, like everything. Like so many different courses and trainings that they're going to pay for. So you get level one uh, nutrition coaching specialist, level two nutrition coaching specialist, Level one mindset specialist, level one hormone specialist, gut health masterclass, women's health masterclass, men's hormone masterclass, thyroid health masterclass, plus coaching mastery. So it's over $35,000 worth, wow. worth of courses sink, man. and coaches that they're going to give away uh, to, to one of our listeners. I think it's one or more of our listeners. Um, but I know that they're giving away more than just that, right? And it's free to apply, right? They don't have to. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. Wow. So it's. And they've done a, a really good job. They've turned a lot of coaches into um, success. It's funny. Go, uh, go, well, we go on their calls and mm. we do these uh, like monthly meetings where we meet with coaches. And I'm seeing coaches that I met one or two years ago yeah. when you and I went and did some yeah, of those yeah. talks and talking to them about their success now. When back then I remembered them just starting. Oh, yeah. And now they're like, oh, yeah, I make well over six figures and I have this and I have two coaches working under me and I've built my yeah. business. Yeah, It's really cool in a short period of time. Yeah, cool I, that so that works. was my experience a lot. So I was on their three Wednesdays ago, two or three Wednesdays ago, and I did something a little bit different. I had them all, like we had, you know, sometimes it can turn into us kind of like, constantly sitting on our soapbox and sure. and preaching to them. And I was like, you know, I really want to dive more into all of your individual businesses. So I made them all kind of report to me like where they're all currently at. And I got incredible insight on one, where they're currently at. And then two, like you said, there was people that I remember meeting them the first time when we first met with NCI, they'd now been with them for a year or longer and hearing where their business is, like, holy shit, you're doing that kind of revenue already? They're like, yeah, no, that's where I'm at. I'm like, oh, wow, this is pretty yeah. cool to see the progression that a lot of these uh, trainers have had working with them. So yeah. I mean, if you want to be awesome. a, a coach online uh, or a, you know, a fitness coach online, um, I, this is the best place uh, yeah. hands down because it's more of a mentorship than it is just a here, you know, read this and pass the test type of thing. Yep. Hey, real quick, go check out live on labs. They have some of the best supplements you'll find anywhere. Nutrients with liposomal technology. So they get delivered to the tissues and parts of your body 
that need the nutrients. So you don't just have expensive urine. This stuff actually gets absorbed. And right now you can get lipoglutathione for free when you bundle it with B-complex and vitamin C. This is only for Mind Pump listeners. So go check them out. Go to liveonlabs.com forward slash MP for that hookup. All right, here comes the rest of the show. First question is from Two Persona Favorita X100. Why is muscle soreness and calorie calories burned not a good cue on effective exercises? What do you suggest we track? Oh, so that's good. Okay, mm. so calories burned is okay to track uh, total for the day, but really one of the reasons why we don't tell people to judge workouts by, by the calories burned. So in other words, what we often say is, look, the calories you burn during a workout, that really doesn't, don't worry about that. In other words, that's not how you should rank your workouts because what people tend to do is say, oh, this is a higher calorie burning workout, therefore it's better for fat burning. The problem with that is it ignores the adaptations that the exercise induces and it's the adaptations that make the biggest impact. For example, if you lift weights, you're not going to burn nearly as many calories as if you do lots of long distance running. Long distance running burns far more calories. But when it comes to long-term fat loss, lifting weights is more effective because it tends to speed up the metabolism. It builds muscle and it teaches your body to burn more calories on its own. So that's that. Now, as far as soreness is concerned, <clears throat> I get where people can say, oh, because I'm sore, that means my workout was effective. But the truth is soreness, if it tells you anything, it tells you you did too much. Mm -hmm. It really doesn't say much more than that. And in the best results I've ever had with myself and with clients through my two decades of training was when I would get to a place where clients didn't get sore at all, or maybe like a tiny bit of soreness where they'd have to search for the soreness. They'd have to stretch and kind of, oh, like, I think I, I feel a little sore. Feeling really sore usually meant, or almost always meant they did too much. And it would typically precede worse results or injury. I would make the same case for calories burned mm. uh, as, as, a, as a metric for the workout. Yeah. All that means is you made the workout hard and making it an Doesn't mean it's effective. Yeah, making an exercise hard is not necessarily what makes it effective. So I, I don't I think it's a terrible way. Now I do I do like and I do think that there's value in tracking the total calories you burn in a day. So you have an idea of your intake and what that right. balance should look like. Like, oh, today my body is burning a total of, you know, 3,000 calories. So I shouldn't eat more than 3,000 calories if my goal is to lose weight, right? So I think understanding your total caloric burn in the day uh, matters. And by the way, the the workout will be such a small fraction of what the total the total burn number would yeah, be. Yeah, that's true. And, and also, even the best calorie trackers um, aren't sophisticated enough to really pick up your how your metabolism is changing. Um, they, they have maybe a 10% error rate with a lot of things, sometimes more. That's a lot. I mean, 10% is 200, 300 calories. That can make or break. And if you build a little bit of muscle or just teach your body to burn more calories, you're not necessarily going to pick that up with a calorie tracker. You will pick it up if you're tracking your calories uh, consumed and notice that, oh, wow, I'm losing weight faster than before, or I'm hungrier, or I'm stronger. So I, I, I could see it being a tool but when people rest everything on it is when you start to get into problems. Yeah, the soreness thing is is flawed. I mean, if you if you're always going into like your next workout sore and and it, it's going to impede on your performance for one, but uh like it it is an indication that you you overstretched a bit. I mean, even if it's a novelty factor, right? So even if you're initially getting back into working out, you're going to have that phase where you're going to go through I'm sore because like I'm reintroducing this type of stress to my body. Um but you really uh, now kind of looking back at that and, and having more maturity in the way that I approach fitness, it's like you, you really need to like do even less than that coming back uh, to be able to build upon that and actually, uh, you know, get the desired adaptation uh, instead of just uh, getting that in immediate feedback that I did work. Like uh, that's all it indicates to me is I did a lot of work yeah. uh, and, and I'm healing from that work. Not necessarily what I need to be focused on is do I feel stronger? Do I feel more energetic? Do I feel, um, you know, a sense of progress going forward? Not necessarily do I feel like that, that workout uh, led to me uh, feeling like I, I had to make it through. Like I was, I, I barreled through. So it. I'm, I'm measuring strength, technique, maybe circumference, maybe a picture. 
Like th those are things that I'm using uh, as an indicator of is my workouts and my programming effective and good. Yeah, like, it, I'm, I'm going to look at those things. Well, more let me than ask I'm, you guys. Look at you guys are very good at obviously you guys know what you're doing when it comes to running workouts. How hard or easy is it to write a workout that'll make someone sore? Easy. Does it yeah, require any easy. skill whatsoever? None. No. You don't need any workout. In fact, you don't need a, a program. If you just want to get sore, There's go to the gym. Of brands out there, that do and it you all just time. want to burn a lot of calories. Yeah, go to the gym, move like crazy, do something that's really, really hard, stress the shit out of yourself, and I promise you, I promise you, you'll see a little bit of results, and you'll plateau real hard, either injure yourself or start to go backwards. Yeah. If it was as easy as getting sore, every new fitness fad would would solve obesity. It doesn't because that's not how it works. And worshiping the soreness and pain leads to a bad relationship with exercise anyway. Even if it were a great way to judge uh, your workouts, no. You if you want to if you want to take all different kind of workouts and exercise types and rank them in terms of effectiveness, rank them on the adaptations they induce in the body, not on the perceived challenge of doing them, not on the soreness or the calories burned while doing them. That means very little. And you said something, Adam, about the calories burned during a workout, how it's almost inconsequential. It is. Like you do an hour. Intense exercise. What are you going to burn? 400 calories if you're lucky? Yeah. 400 extra calories? So you work out three days a week. Okay, 1,200 calories a week. Do the math over the course of the week. What is that per day, yes. right? That's almost nothing. Yeah. You could eat. I could eat 1,200 calories up, can, in 10 you, minutes. You can get up an extra hour earlier on the weekends, go for a, wike, a, a hike yeah. or a walk after all your meals, and you'll it will end up adding up to be more than your right. your hard workout is. So it's so much more effective to focus on that from your intake of food because it's a lot easier to manage it that way. Yeah. Totally. Next question is from Jay Pliu. What are your opinions on sugar versus sugar substitutes? Okay, you know what's interesting about this is – uh, obviously sugar is carbohydrates, right? So every gram of sugar is four calories. And so the theory is, well, if we cut sugar out of people's diets or have them replace their sugar uh, consumption with a sugar substitute that has no calories, we should see weight loss. We should see improvements in health. We should see people solving some of their health issues because they've cut their calories, right? Okay. Now in controlled environments, when we take people and we have them count, every calorie and they replace sugar with sugar substitutes. They do cut their calories. They do see weight loss. But in other studies, real world studies, not where people are in a controlled environment where everything's counted, when people are just like, yeah, I have you know two sodas a day. And then scientists say, cool, replace those with a diet soda. And then we'll track and see what happens. No weight loss. Mm -mm. There's no success. It's actually terrible success, a, a track record in the real world. It hasn't done anything to help with the obesity epidemic at all. And lots of very obese people have lots of sugar substitutes. Why is that? Because it promotes behaviors that lead to overeating. It also eliminates a barrier between you and consumption. Whereas when I'm going to go have a sugar-filled soda, I know I'm about to consume 200 calories. If it's a zero-calorie soda, I tend to be like, oh, cool, there's no consequences. Yeah, I'm going to keep drinking inert. this. Yeah. And that perception of sweetness can change behaviors. It, and it, what it does, it tends to make people eat more food. So my opinion is this. If you're someone who tracks everything all the time, then, then yeah, there could be some benefit there uh, with body composition. But for everyone else, this is zero, it's not going to help you at all. Replacing your soda with sugar-free soda and not tracking everything else, it's just going to result in this, again, all the studies show this, it just results in eating more calories elsewhere. It was, doesn't help. Was that study that you bring up every now and then concerning that, was it two to 500 calorie increase? 500. 500 per day? Oh, you're talking about heavily processed food consumption? Yeah, just yeah. in terms of it leading towards like behaviors in that direction and, and like the cravings. It's just like, uh, I mean, in terms of like your your body's perception of of flavor and sweetness and taste, like you're still um, seeking that out if, if that's still being something that's introduced. And a lot of times too, for me, uh, the um, the artificial version it's so much sweeter, and it's like it it, it almost um, it you know anything else besides that it seems like less less than. And so I tended to, to gravitate more towards these sweet uh, food items. Yeah. I probably, out of all of us, I probably use the most sugar substitutes. I mean, I'm drinking a zero calorie Zevia, right? Right. Now, right. So I probably utilize the most. And I think a lot of those behaviors came from my competing days of like tracking uh, and like going, Hey, I want something sweet and I can't have any calories. And so I'm going to have something like that. 
Um, but I'm not fooled by uh, the behaviors that come with that. Like I'm very aware that when I drink zero calorie drinks, I have a, a tendency to want to have two, three, four in a day of it. Mm -hmm. And then, then, I, then I have cravings for other foods. I do notice those behaviors versus if I say like there's been times where I'm, I don't have an option for a calorie free and I have to drink a regular Coke or a regular Pepsi and I'm craving a soda or a drink and I'll have it. And what I won't have a second or a third yeah. or a fourth because I'm very aware of the calorie content in there. So yeah, I don't, I don't have much of a dog in this fight as far as, uh, of like, am I fro am I for them? Am I against them? I think I have more of a neutral relationship with them, but it, like everything else, I mean, I just shared recently on the podcast that I took a fast from, you know, sex and weed and food. And really for me, like that part of that practice, and I do that with things like soda, even though I don't announce it every time I do it, is just like, I never want to be dependent or feel like I have to have anything. And I do feel that uh, those, uh, those addictive properties from these zero calorie type drinks, it's very hard for me to kick the rock star thing. It's very hard for me to kick the Zevia drink every single day thing. And I'm, I'm aware of it. Like, mm -hmm. and I'd never want anything to have control of me like that. So I do allow it to creep in my life, but I also pay attention to my own behaviors on, am I allowing myself to have one a day or one every other day, or am I having two, three, four, five in a day? And it, it, it easily can creep up to that. And yeah. I, I kind of get set these boundaries with myself of like, okay, I can enjoy those things. But if I start noticing where I, I I'm wanting one, two, three, multiple in a day, like it's time for me well, the, to peel back. Well, I remember when I first became a trainer. So I, I grew up, we almost never had soda. And we definitely never had diet soda as a kid. So I just didn't grow up with it, right? So I, I wasn't, you know, I had them here and there. We'd go eat, you know, if we'd go out to eat or something, I'd have some, but it wasn't a big deal. And then I became a trainer. And I remember some strange behaviors from clients that I would see repeated. Like I'd have clients that would drink Diet Coke mm -hmm. and they would drink a lot of Diet Cokes. I'd have clients that didn't drink water. I had a lot of clients who were like, I don't like water. I don't like the taste of it. I'm like, what? You don't like the, wa the taste of water? No, what you're bringing up yeah. right now is a very good thing that I've connected to my own behaviors. So what I easily can do, I did this one day in, in, in Hawaii. I'm in Hawaii, so I kind of let the like, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not restricting anything. I'm just going to enjoy. And what happens when I have that attitude is I easily can have carbonated zero calorie drinks all day and no fucking water. Mm -hmm. And then I get a headache or I don't, and I go and I go, oh shit, like I haven't had like, just water today at all. Well, I remember I, I would and and I would have clients say things like, um, "I don't like the taste of regular soda. I like I like uh, sugar free better." And then I did research. I'm like, "Oh, it's sweeter. It hits the the sweet receptors a little differently. It can make actual sugar taste more bland. That's interesting." And I also remember using um, you know sugar free substitutes in meal plans. This is early in the day, back in the day when I'd create clients meal plans, where I'd try and tell them, "Here, just replace your sodas with this. This will make you lose weight." It never worked. Did you guys ever have clients besides bodybuilders and, and competitors who would track every single That's thing? That's it. Those are the only people that I ever had success utilizing things that were sweetened with artificial sweeteners. Yeah. Did, I mean, otherwise, did, did you get any clients where like, oh my God, this was a game changer. It totally helped me lose yeah, weight. All I needed to do was switch to diet soda and yeah. I lost all this weight. <laughs> no, <laughs> never. No, so many addicted to Diet Coke though. I, I wonder, like in terms of that product, you know, for them, like if it if it at any time like met the same amount of uh, revenue they're bringing in from just regular Coke because it was like oh actually, so prevalent. I would love to see that stat. I, so I prefer Diet Coke. You'll never yeah. catch me drinking a regular. Coke. I feel Please. like they yeah. they probably I, kept I a little bit of the coca leaf formula still in there. So I, it's so well. I, I think I Sal, they make Sal, money. Sal's. I would actually. I would love to. I bet they do. That's a great stat to pull up, Doug. I would love to see Diet Coke versus Coke as far as revenue. sales. Yeah, revenue is concerned. I bet Diet Coke rivals it. Um, mm. It's overtaken, classic Coca Cola. It overtook it. See? Wow. Yeah. Well, what it is is you have you have a so brilliant. You have Crazy. a combination of things that are making this just a perfect storm. One, you have this signal that says no calories, no sugar. So you've got that. Yeah. Number two, Coke has caffeine in it. Caffeine's got addictive properties. Where do you know that? So that's there. And number three, it's hyper palatable. And Diet Coke is sweeter than regular Coke. Yeah. Aspartame, which is the sweetener they use. Is so much sweeter than normal sugar. They use a tiny, tiny amount, and even the amount that they use, it's powerful. It hits the sweet, the, the the receptors that perceive sweetness harder, which is why people who love diet sodas feel like they don't like the taste of regular soda, which I used to think right. was really weird when yeah. I was a kid. Yeah. This was like so, that joke. Too. That's me. I, I work in a restaurant, and um, you know, you get this group of like big people coming in, ordering like 
every fried food yep. and like disgusting, you know, like huge calorie bomb. And then like, Oh, but diet Coke. Yep. You know what you're saying? <laughs> Why? Yeah, like, yeah. honestly, like, what are we doing? It's here? because, because well, they like it better. Actually. I mean, that's, I, you yes. know, if I, if I were to, even though I can't remember the last Some time, of them just I, I went it through, though as a calorie thing. Yeah. That's stupid. hilarious. That's afterwards. Yeah. yeah. What the, the driving factor was the taste. Sure. Yeah. 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 So the, the problem I prefer, is, I prefer it. So you would, ca- so, someone would say that about me. Like you'd see me go through, even though yeah, I've been through a McDonald's drive through in decades, but if I were to go through a McDonald's drive through, I would There'd be a diet. Coke. I'd be a diet Coke. I would. I would. I would ask for. It. They sell more. I mean, Doug even pull up. I, so really, what this is, and this is just really uh, occurring to me. This is a perfect example of the divorce between behaviors and the me- mechanistic ac- aspects of obesity. So we look at obesity. Yeah. We go, oh, it's too many calories. Let's just cut the calories and give everybody the other stuff that comes along with the calories, and we should solve the problem. You didn't solve the problem. Right. They're still consuming. Math. They're yeah. still consuming something that's hyper sweet and, and encouraging behaviors that lead to obesity, and that's why it has done nothing to solve the obesity epidemic. Next question is from Seth Bruce ninety six. What stabilizer muscle exercises do you recommend to help arms stop shaking when bench pressing? Oh man! So so do you guys? Whenever you King. this doesn't happen. Shoulder. To me. This is more shoulder than it is arm. It is, but but. This hasn't happened to me in a long time, but as a kid, when I would have to take breaks from workouts, I remember I'd go back to this. This is because you never take breaks. This I happens to me all the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's because you never take breaks yeah. ever. Well, this happens to me all the time. If I take you're shaky, right? Yeah. If yeah. I take two weeks off of lifting and I come back to like a movement and like bench press. It, yeah. Oh, yeah. The, fir- the first day is, so it's very normal yeah. to feel this. For it's, someone like you who never misses. Nervous system kind of reacts. You have to go back right? to your teenage years, but yeah. this happens to me all the time. Whenever I, I, I fall off for two weeks and I haven't trained consistently, I go back and yeah, you're, it's, you're CNS and that's, that's it. it. It's super normal. And it's like, I mean, can you do some stuff to like help stay? And I, I said shoulders, right? It's not your arms. It's your your shoulders staying in position and staying in that fixed position, yep. stabilizing while mm-hmm. the arms, but the arms are shaking, but they're shaking because the shoulders are are trying to trying to get stabilized. So you could do some primers. Yeah, prime. Yep. Yeah, priming the shoulders and the shoulder girdle really well. That probably would mitigate some of that, but part of it's just going to happen. Yeah. And, and, and you'll and, adapt quickly. And the priming, so a good example is this, is if you've ever experience this, you know that after the sec- first or second set, the shakiness goes away. Yep. All of a sudden, the, the rep becomes smooth. And it is. It's the CNS. The CNS has to organize the muscles and fire them in smooth, efficient ways. And when you don't train for a while or you're just getting started, it has to learn this. The CNS has to learn how to fire muscles properly while moving this weight in this particular way, keeping things smooth and efficient. Mm-hmm. And so it feels like your muscles are laughing almost or they're kind of shaky. And you see this more common with some exercises than others. The best way to get rid of it is to practice the exercise often and yeah. to slow down the reps. That's really the only way to do it. And if you want to get rid of it in that same workout, it usually takes a set or two. As the muscles, as your because your CNS adapts that fast. It adapts that fast to where within the same workout, you should be able to get everything to push a little smoother. It's so funny because, like, for example, like I, I know Ben Pollock kind of – like he's a really strong guy, right? And he's been doing every kind of powerlifting movement like uh, – um, loaded, you know, um, not doing like no unilateral stuff. And then all of a sudden went to like lunges, for instance. Oh, yeah. yeah, he was like, all to, wobbly. Yeah, but it just happens to the best of us is my point. Yeah, yeah. Um, to where like you introduce something that's um, a little bit different and the body has to react completely uh, to it in a, in a different fashion. It's going to take that bit of time for your body to really acclimate to that. No, that's a great, that's a great analogy or example because in a, in unilateral movements, it requires more stabilizer muscles because you don't have the other, Mm -hmm. the other arm or other leg in it to stabilize. So yeah, I think that's a great example and that's what's happening right now. And you just gave a good example of someone who is unbelievably conditioned, trained, strong as shit, but all he had to do was go from, you know, squatting six, 700 pounds, which he can do to doing a body weight lunge. And he was shaky, and it's not because he's weak. It's just that, that he has that those stabilizer muscles required to stabilize in a lunge position is very different than being able to squat yes. bilaterally. It's and not so, a muscle thing; it's a CNS thing. Yep. Yep. I remember years ago, God, I'll never forget this. There was this bodybuilder, big guy. I don't know how much he weighed, but if I had to guess, he's probably two hundred and forty pounds, shredded, big dude. And then there was a weightlifter. It was a small guy, about one hundred and fifty pounds. And, and the weightlifter was overhead pressing. I don't remember what the weight was, but it was a lot of weight to the point where all of us were kind of impressed. Doing a standing overhead press, right? Everybody was really impressed. So the bodybuilder goes over to try it out. And the bodybuilder could lift the same weight, but it didn't look the same. 
he looked shaky and you could tell he was kind of muscling it and not really stable. And then afterwards they were talking and he's like, yeah, I'm just, I'm not used to that movement and the way lifters, like, I, just, I practice this all the time. It's part of my lifts. The bodybuilder's like, I do this seated. I do this with dumbbells. I get pumps in my muscles. And it's just, the bodybuilder had bigger, stronger muscles in the sense that those muscles probably contracted harder than that 150 pound weightlifter, but they couldn't organize the mm -hmm. same way. They yeah. couldn't fire with the same efficiency. And that's why he, he had trouble lifting the same weight. Next question is from Kony Chua. What are each of your most co controversial health and wellness opinions? Oh, I, yeah. I like this question. Yeah. Yeah. So the first one that pops into my mind. Controversial. Yeah. That I, that I would say is controversial that I would still promote or that I'm personally a fan of is fasted cardio in the morning. Mm. And we've got we've seen all the research, and we know that if that's like know, a pendulum with the opinions on that, right? It is, yeah. it, it, and and we know that it does not make a difference whether you're fed or not fed. But this, and but remember when we, when we look at those studies, these studies are not measuring behaviors. It's the the, the, the mechanistic part. Yeah, and and if you were like, oh, they, if calories are controlled. And the person does fasted versus fed cardio, then it's all the same. That's the argument. But we talk about this a lot on the show about that you, you can't take the behavioral part out of an equation, in my no, opinion. No. It's in fact, it is as important, if not more important. It's the most important thing. And so and being somebody who went through this process of never being a fasted cardio person for half of my training career and never even caring about it or thinking about it because I just didn't care about getting shredded or bodybuilding. And then all of a sudden I get into the bodybuilding world and anybody who's been in the bodybuilding world knows that like that is a staple thing to do mm -hmm. is to do fasted cardio. So for the first time in my life that was introduced. Now, my biggest takeaway, because I understood the science going into it, I had already listened to Lane Norton shit all over it for years before and stuff like that, before I even decided to introduce it. What I found was if I wanted to do an hour of fasted cardio, that meant that I had to start my day an hour earlier every single day that I was going to do that. That got me out of bed and moving earlier and also made me extend out the time that I would have to eat. That extended period of time and the additional hour of getting up every day ended up adding into these higher calorie day burns consistently than if I wouldn't have not done it. Now, you could make the case, well, you could have just woke up an hour earlier every day and then done your cardio fed later on. Well, yeah, the truth is I wouldn't do it. Mm -hmm. I knew I wouldn't do it. And so, so me having this routine of I'm not going to eat, I'm going to get up as early as I can, and the very first thing I'm going to do is go do cardio – it promoted these longer days more consistently for me, and I had tremendous success with it. Yeah. Even though I understand the science doesn't support it being better than Fed Cardio. I so I I not not only agree with you. I'm going to add to that that I think that the behavior aspects for the average person who doesn't compete and doesn't think of it the way you do, they still benefit because it frames their day with fitness. And studies show this: when people exercise regularly, they tend to. A lot of people tend to also pay attention to their food. They also tend to pay attention to the rest of the day. So if you start your day with exercise, it's like you're starting your day off on the right foot. Mm -hmm. I started out my workout. Okay, now now some people can use it as, as an excuse to overeat. The, but when they look at long-term studies, people who do this consistently, not the people who do it for like a couple months and then stop. People who do this consistently, what they find is when people start their day off with the practice like exercise, uh, that they tend to eat better throughout the day. They tend to have better, make better choices. And when they don't, they tend to make worse choices because it add, frames a day. I'll add to that. So another thing that I made a connection, and of course, not everybody is going to be like me, but I, I, do, I found this common with a lot of people was that I would wake up, I had figured out my day to get ready to go to work and do my, my normal routine down to the minute on what time my alarm. And I, wanted, I was going to sleep as long as I could to get the shower, brush the teeth, get dressed, do mm -hmm. things, drive to work, whatever like that. When I had to do this whole hour before, and now I'm up way before I needed to, it gave me time to organize my thoughts on what I was going to eat. Where if I didn't yeah. do that, I would eat whatever was closest or drive in somewhere and grab something really quick on the go because it was the most time efficient thing for me. It wasn't the best thing for me. Yeah. Mm. Where when I was walking on a treadmill fasted, I was thinking about what am I going to, when I get home, what can I make myself or what, or I would have it prepared ahead of time because I've got this extra hour that I'm up earlier. Totally. So I noticed that a lot of these behaviors uh, around my morning routine and eating correctly. And like you said, started like it made a big difference. So even though I'm very familiar with the science that supports, 
you know, fasted versus or uh, non-fasted and it's, it's moot as far as uh, it being more beneficial. Uh, that is not including the behavioral aspect. And I see lots of benefits. To Agreed that. Oh, add to that. <laughs> no, actually I'm not going to add to that. But um, <laughs> uh, I think for mine, um, I would, I would, uh, I guess it's not really that controversial. I guess it's controversial, right? Um, to uh, basically, you're only as strong as what you can lift without any aided support. Oh, yeah. mm. there you go. Yeah, that's just. I mean, and, and to me, that's. There, I guess there's some controversy because because you know you can wear belts and you can wear wrist wraps and you can wear like shirts and 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 things to be able to lift weight and like boost your ego. But at the end of the day, uh, if you're just picking something up, like you're only as strong as what you've built. I don't think that's controversial. I think that's uncommon. Mm. Yeah. I think that's a fair way to, because I, I think that's not a common way of thinking anymore. I mean, anymore. It's, a it's a truth. No, it is a truth. That's it's why it's not truth. controversial. It's not controversial because he's, it's a fact. If you judge your strength- People don't want to hear that, I think yeah. is my point. Yeah, yeah, I think if you judge your strength by how much you can lift in the real world, like normal, then it's 100% true, right? If you, yeah. if, you require, if you need to have knee wraps and wrist straps and a belt to lift your 400 pounds, and then you're in the real world, well, you can't lift 400 pounds. It's just not, it's just, you can't do it. So I totally get it. Unless somebody judges their strength by what they can lift with those aids. So then that then competition. Fine. Yeah, then it makes sense or whatever. But no, that's yeah, I don't have true. a problem with it, but that's just sort of my thing. Yeah. yeah. Well, at the end of the day, um, you're doing this for uh improving the quality of your life, giving you more strength, stability, performance, mobility for everyday life. So there's carryover, right? If you use wrist straps and then you go in the real world, you're still gonna have some carryover. But it's not 100% carryover or not as much carryover as when you don't use those things. So uh, I think that I agree with that. All right. So mine is that this push to get people plant-based is oh. going to cause more health problems and be worse for the environment than allowing people to eat an omnivorous diet. That's wow. that's mine right there. I agree. And, and that, that is controversial. And here and now here's why. Here's that's why. Good, that's a good one. There's a couple reasons why. One is we look at the effects on the climate in a vacuum. So I'll use another example, right? We just had a pandemic and uh, COVID was sp spreading. And we said, if we locked everybody down, we're going to get this many less infections and save this many lives, which is true. But what we didn't do is look at the big picture and say, oh, wait, we're going to lose more lives because of more depression, more anxiety, more suicides, more drug overdoses. Economic productivity is going to go down every time it goes down 2% or 3%. X amount more people die because there's people that are on that line of poverty where if it goes down a little bit, if you're wealthy or middle class, you're not that big of a deal, you know, cancel a couple streaming subscriptions. But if you're like barely making ends meet, that could be life or death. I can't go to the doctor, that kind of stuff. So in this particular case, that's what we end up doing with uh, this particular argument because animals are incredible at capturing, at, at eating, you know, they, they'll eat plants, poop it out, goes, you know, create fertilizer, create more grasslands. That kind of stuff. Not only that, but you see in studies often when the average person, and there wasn't one that just came out. In fact, Max Lugavier um, posted this. When you tell the average person, hey, or you convince them or you scare them and say, hey, just go plant-based. It's much better. What they end up doing is they end up just eating more heavily processed foods. Mm -hmm. Their diet gets worse because the very few whole foods that they ate were animal-based. Like if you look at the average American's diet, 60, 70% of it's processed. The 30% that's not processed is milk, eggs, and meat. And meat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you scare meat them away is. from that. It's not like they're going to go and all of a sudden have this wonderfully planned, executed, you know, plant-based whole food diet. They're just going to go eat- No, they just eliminate the meats. Substitutes. Yeah, right. just eliminate it. So you see more nutrient deficiencies. You'll see more illness, less productivity. And here's my point with that when it comes to the climate. The, the most successful thing that we have in the world to solve problems is human ingenuity. You're going to reduce mass productivity. You're going to increase illness across the board. We don't know what the ramifications of that are with productivity and innovation. We don't know that. Not to mention, it's going to make people sicker and fatter by pushing them in this direction. So this push and people saying it's better for our people's health is better. Bullshit. It's not. It, you, you, it, you're going to need more planning. You're going to need more. And you, tell, you, you expect the average person to plan, first off, plan an omnivore diet really well. Good luck. Now tell them to eliminate the only whole natural foods they eat. Yeah, the most nutritious food. <laughs> the most nutrient-dense foods. You're going to make their health much worse. You'll make obesity worse. You'll increase nutrient deficiencies. And the studies support this. They I, do. I like that And one. don't compare 
people who are plant-based, who are health conscious to the average person, compare the average person to the average person, one of them eating omnivore, one of them going, oh, I'm going to go plant-based, watch what happens there. That's where you see the problems. Look, if you like Mind Pump, uh, check out mindpumpfree.com. We got a lot of free guides that can help you with almost any health or fitness goal. You can also find all of us on social media. So you can find Justin on Instagram at Mind Pump Justin, Adam on Instagram, Mind Pump Adam, and you can find me on Twitter at Mind Pump Sal. This one's really important, and that is to phase your training. If somebody trains for a full year doing a bench press and they're always aiming for five reps, if you compared that person to a person who did bench press where they did three or four weeks of five reps, but then they did three or four weeks of 12 reps and then three or four weeks of, let's say, 15 to 20 reps, and then they'll throw in some supersets, at the end of that year, you're going to see more consistent progress from the person who's moving in and out and less injury. That's another thing. You'll see less injury as well.